So in this last lecture on balancing, we will study balancing of UK. As usual, with the example of the pole bar, as we have done in the earlier analysis session. So this is our pole bar as usual. Now the notation is here. The link vectors. This is L1. So now since we are using uh, complex numbers to uh, designate vectors, so the vector L1 is just uh, real, okay, because this is the direction in which we take the real axis. So that is why I have not put the bar here. So L1 is the first thing, then complex numbers are vector L2, L3, L4 with the vectors O to A, A B, and O4. Right? So for these two three, we could say L2 is the magnitude L2 into the unit vector along L2. And in the context numbers, it will be it will be called I theta. Right? And so on for P L2. Now masses of the moving wings m2, m3, m4, as we would expect, at g2, g3, g4. Now, intentionally, the center of mass, centers of mass, have been put uh, a little out of the uh, line and line open. Okay, to improve the generality, that it can be. Now, the position of this mass center O2 G2 is the complex number G2, which is the magnitude G2, this length O2 G2, into the unit vector along this length, further multiplied with this T bar I beta T, where beta T is this little time. By which it is away from the link direction. Similarly, for G4 and for G3, the for, for example, G4 is to be measured from O4, okay, and G3 is to be measured from A because uh, I mean, it could have been done from B also, but we choose to do it from A because the location has to be seen. From a point which is on the same view. So that is this. G3, I3 into T bar I beta T, so additional term. So as you know, that multiplication with a unit magnitude complex number basically turns another complex number by the argument with the So same thing with all of and then we propose two balancing masses, M A prime at B two prime and M B prime at G four prime. Again, this type with respect to from O two and O four. So like this. So here, the O two G two prime vector will be given by the magnitude G two prime into the unit vector in the direction of the link into this complex number. Where the argument is beta t prime is in the direction. Now, what would be the addition of the code values? So, basically, we will collect all the MR, MR, MR terms from uh, some fixed point and vectorially add them together. Vectorially, here we are in the complex. <laughs> so, M2 G2, then M3 here, which means from a fixed point you have to take so this plus this. So that is M2 plus this vector G3 plus M4 G4, and then the corresponding terms for the two balancing masses that we are balancing for. That we have to take. And this whole thing should be common. If it is constant, 
then there is no dynamic force imbalance. So this has to be found. Now what we do? We put the G2, G3, G4, G2 prime, G4 prime, all these things in terms of object numbers involving angles, beta, beta prime, etc. And the unit vectors along the segments. So from here we will get M2, G2, I2, and G2 bar I beta two. From here, uh, another I term will come, I2 term will come, M3, L2, so M3, L2. And then from here, another I2 term will come because this is connected to L2. So that is plus I3 term will come only from here. So M3, G2. And then I4 term will come from two places. One is Eta and the other is Eta. So connecting all those things together, this thing, this vector has to be a constant. Okay. So these are unit complex vectors, complex numbers, I2, I3, I4. And their positions are also complex. For example, position of I2 is These are the constant, but this is also a complex, but constant. Similarly, this is constant. Now, it involves an unknown G2 prime, and of course, also G2 prime. Similarly, this involves an unknown, but all of these are constant. They do not change with time as you operate them. Right? But then, I2, I3, I4 are logically independent because we have this closure equation that is this. So this L1 I1 or simply L1 that is anyway a constant. Now, so there are two equations in the P complexion or P vectors. Okay. Equations also complex. So between the two, you can eliminate one of the three unit vectors. So the way is simple because here. I3 is appearing with the simplest position. Here, everything is appearing with simple positions. So, if you multiply this upper equation with L3, then L3 I3 you will get here. And the value from L of L3 I3 from this equation, that is L1 minus L2 I2 plus L4 I4, you can insert there. Then, from this equation, I2 will go out. So when you do that, then what will you do? The rest of it, when you organize, then this will get distributed as something into I2, something into I4, and some constant complex number. So that constant complex number can be taken on the other side with other constants. So what will remain is some complex number into I2 plus some complex number into I2. But these two, So this, well, these two complex numbers, C2 and C4, will be expressions of the data of the data rule and the balancing masses and their positions that we are going to introduce. So, in the unknown. so these two will be will involve this and of course the corresponding angular position beta and this. Now, you can say that this is, in a way, the magnitude of something, the direction of which is given by this. Similarly, so together, they constitute the complex number. So, now I2 and I4 are variable complex numbers. So, for the whole thing to be constant, it will be important that the Coefficients of the variable terms should be different. So, C2 bar equal to 0 and C4 bar equal to 0. What are these two expressions, C2 and C4? Uh, full line long expression, C2. <coughs> and those two equations you try to solve. C2 equal to 0 and C4 equal to 0. And that will not be difficult because not much of a solution. 
if it is just the right. For example, one vector equation we will call this thing into e to the power i to the pi. So, which you can split into real and imaginary, positive and first beta to and time beta to, first beta to prime and time beta to current time. So, squaring and adding, you find this. And by dividing and dividing, you find this. Similarly, from the other equation, before you get this. The so following then will be reasonably straightforward. So, this whole thing will ensure post that. I mean, introducing a balancing mass at this position and introducing and, and another balance mass, balancing mass in the force at this position. Okay. That will ensure complete force balance. But then, if you work out the moment unbalance, then you will find that that would exaggerate the moment unbalance. Whatever was the moment unbalance earlier, intuition of this will make it worse. So the practical policy is that we determine these things and keep everything like that, except that we would then fraction of this. Say not the whole thing, the mass would be reduced to something like 0.7 or 0.65, something like that. So that quite a bit of force balance, force and balance is reduced at the cost of reducing energy of the moment, moment and moment. So that is how we can handle it. Now, it would be extremely unpracticable to do anything better in the direction of complete balance. So this basically completes our discussion of balancing, completes our study of balancing. But in the last lecture, I told you at the end that in this lecture we will take a second example of IC. So let us take. So, this example is of a six cylinder four stroke inline engine. Now, the inline engine has its cylinders all parallel one, two, three, four, five, six. The axis parallel in a single plane. And so, these the direction of the cylinders is perpendicular to the axis of common rotation, common axis of rotation. And the cranks, the six cranks are built into 12 with the crankshaft in the name of crankshaft. So this whole thing is called crankshaft. The understanding here is that the geometric, kinematic idea of the shaft runs centrally and six cranks, these six are actually crank. So the thing is made like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So this and this, these two cranks are at 120 degree angles from this on the two sides. So incidentally, this happens to be the only crankshaft uh, which uh, I have seen being manufactured at the uh, Delco in Manchester long, long time back, three decades back. When I was roughly, uh, I was an undergraduate. So at Delco, I found, I saw this thing getting manufactured, the steps of the manufacturer, the portion. Now, that is one of the reasons why I chose this example. Now, here, uh, and uh, you can understand why Telco was making it. For the Tata trucks, you would need the six cylinder structure for the six cylinder engine. Okay. So, here, since this is 120 degrees out okay, behind, and this is six 
120. Or rather, this is 120 we ahead. This is 120 we ahead. So if you see from the z direction, x to 1, rather this direction, this is on this side, then the crank of 1 will look like this. Crank of 2 would look like this. 3 and 4 parallel. And 5 is parallel to 2. 6 is parallel to 1. So this is how the crank would look from this view. I'm doing this view rather than this because here you see x to y is clockwise. So as you run it clockwise, the screw will dig into the thing. Okay. Now the firing order is 1, 4, 2, 6, 3, 5. I mean, this is one possible firing order. You could have other firing order. So it is a four stroke engine. So the entire cycle, thermodynamic cycle gets completed over four strokes. That means two crank rotation. So right now you see that one and six are at the top dead center position. Candidates were firing, but actually only one of them fired because it's a four stroke engine. So say one is firing at this shown position. After 120 degree turn of the time, 4 will come here, 3 also will come, but 3 is perhaps completing the exhaust stroke, and 4 has just completed the compression stroke after the 120 degree. Then 4 fires, and then 2 will fire, and then what else can be done next in the next crank cycle? Crank Turn crank rotation in that order 6, 2, 5, 2, 5. Okay. So this is the final. Now, for each cylinder, the values of the crank rate, this way, and connecting rod L, and therefore the ratio lambda, and the mass of the reciprocating part, or okay. theta. So the primary unbalance. Would be for each cylinder along x, this one. Along x means actually parallel because the, central, the actual central, cylinder center lines are not all along x but parallel. So along x actually shows only the direction, not the line of action. Line of action, not the x axis along the direction. M reciprocating omega square are positive. Secondary unbalance would be similarly. If we have done that. And this would be for each cylinder. So, accordingly, each of them will introduce some unbalance, some force unbalance, some moment unbalance. Now, since the, this is operating on six planes, so there will be a moment issue. And we will take all the moments around this one. And now, what, is, what becomes relevant is that the distance between the two consecutive cylinder axles from here to here is all A, 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 A. So you see, the distance of the line of action of that unbalanced force for cylinder 1 will be 5 by 2 A, A plus A plus A by 2. For second one, it will be 3 by 2 A, negative, 3 by negative. For the third one, it will be minus half a and then the corresponding quantity half a three by two a five by two a for, for the remaining two cylinders. So at the time of moment unbalanced uh, estimate a is a two. So the unbalance in each way is the x component of a rotary unbalance due to index this is typically for this in order to Make the analysis reasonably straightforward. So, if you had put M reciprocating at the crank field, then anyway, this would be the M, M reciprocating omega square R would be the centrifugal force, which would be the unbalanced. And its X component would be cos theta, Y component would be phi theta. Now we understand that here only the X component will remain, Y component will not. But x component will be the x component of that rotary unbalance. And now we will say that in order to analyze, we will separate the problem into primary unbalance and secondary unbalance. 
And for each cylinder, we will consider the equivalence of this unbalance as a rotary mass placed at the country at our distance. Take this, and then later it, we have to take its x component. So, what we do for the six cylinders, we add up the forces first and then take the x component. Okay. It will be the same thing. Okay. So, if you consider individual forces, their x components and then add up the x components, or join up the add up the individual forces vectorially and then take the x component, it will be the same thing. So, now different phases of the six unbalanced masses gets automatically handled by considering these rotary masses at the appropriate angles by placing them at the prime okay. So, in the four, the supporting mass of four and three will operate at this phase after 120 degrees. But anyway, right now they are geometrically at 120 degrees. So placing them at the crank pin puts that in the geometric position in such a way that the result will be turn out to be right as it should be. Now let us analyze the unbalance. The primary force angle. So let us say F T is this. Now the primary force diagram shows the resulting force to be now because for cylinder one F T you get like this. Then for four, for which the crank pin is at 120 degrees. So this is the same magnitude, that will be again Ft, this way. Then 2 Ft, like this, it's equal equilateral pair. And then the same thing repeats for 6, 3, and 5. So resultant force is this. And so obviously it's x component is also here. So primary forces are all there. Then you check the primary momentum. So moment of the forces due to the so-called fishes. Fictitious masses at the crank pin corresponding to the six cylinder to be Ft times minus 5 by 2 a minus 3 by 2 a minus half a plus half a and so on. These six. Now, this one for cylinder 1. So, this is negative. So, rather than now, you see the moments are actually turned the right angle by the right angle. So, so, if the force was in the x direction, as in the case of cylinders 1 and 6, the corresponding moment would be in y direction. But for the purpose of drawing, the custom is to draw the parallel only, draw the parallel to these force diagrams only, with the understanding that we know that the entire moment diagram is actually turned by the right angle. And it's okay. So, if we draw it parallel, now, since it is negative, so in the x direction it will not be above, it will be below. Okay. So, this is minus sign coming here. So, actually, because of the minus sign, it is coming downward. Okay. And for the sixth one, it will be exactly that much upward. And their crank positions coincide. One is at the end of second stroke, the other is at the end of fourth stroke. Then, crank position. Similarly, uh, this 2 and 5 will be this way and this way, and 3 and 4 will be little this way and little this way. So each moment is balanced by the check that level. And that makes sense because you see these two have been made better so that. These two at the same moment have the same unbalanced force, and this first moment and this first moment will be cancel each other exactly. Similarly, these two will be. That is the idea of making it like we have. Now we find that moment unbalanced also at the prime level. Now we'll go to the secondary level, secondary unbalanced. And here it is. So what we will do, 
is that we will try to have the two omega here and the rest of it we will manage at the max. The replace each channel balance at secondary would be two or would be down. We we'll put a one by four here for the mass. And so the mass now put at the tranquil is not m there, but lambda by four m. And here in terms of omega, we make it two omega and then r cos two with a rotary unbalance of this much. And the and rotating with the speed of twice. But now the tanks are also apparently at a different point because in place of angle theta, we have to have two theta. So earlier, whatever was coming at a no, zero for tanks one six remains at zero. But four three were coming at one twenty degree, they now come at four two forty degree. On the other hand, two five were coming earlier. At 240 degree, now they go to 480 degree, which is the same as one, one person. And now this pattern shows you that as you repeat it, exactly the same thing will happen for the force and balance. Because the rules of 25 and rules of 43 have got interested. And the magnitudes have changed. They are same for all the six. So this is a completely symmetric case, just like the primary equation, and therefore process are balanced here. Then you go for secondary moment and balance, and I'm leaving this for you to work out the moment. So now the plan is to consider the moment of each of these unbalanced forces. I mean, that's not the case in the primary like, unbalance also. Each of these unbalanced forces calculate their moments, complete the moment diagram, get the resultant moment unbalance, and then that resultant moment unbalance, turn it by a right angle as moment should be, and then take its y component. Okay? So that is the whole thing. You have to do. But in this case, as you proceed with the process, you will find that uh, I'm leaving this as a for you, it's quite straightforward. You will find that the secondary moment also, the result is zero. So now, as the result is zero, any component of it will be zero and turning the zero out of the other component of it. So the six and the fourth group in the union happens to be a completely balanced union to the and this is good. Now, I advise you to continue this exercise and check the fourth and sixth order and balance also in process and more. And for that, the corresponding tanks we have to appropriately change using a four here. And in order to make this, since this is the four to ten six figure, so in order to make it as four omega and six omega. Whatever compensation you have to give for the mass, you do all that and work out the force and balance, resulting force and balance, and resulting moment and balance in the correct magnitude and direction of the up to the fourth and the sixth form, which is the sixth form. So, this completes our study of uh, balancing, and next we have two big topics.